just great to be here. You know, my wife, Chris, and I live uh, with our three kids just over the border in the western part of Lehigh County. It's great to be back. It's wonderful to see this uh, enthusiastic crowd. I am so grateful to all of you. I am very grateful to the governors who are uh, going to be sharing some thoughts with us in a couple of minutes. Uh, let me just say, I think we got a big victory coming right around the corner. What do you think? But I have to say, it's going to come not a moment too soon. You stop and think about the damage that these guys are doing in Washington. Just for a minute, just for the last 18 months, what have we witnessed? Serial bailouts of failing companies, the government nationalizing whole industries, spending money on a scale we've never seen before, corresponding deficits and debt that are completely unsustainable. You add in that cap-and-trade energy tax, Crime check and government run health care. Is it any wonder we don't have a recovery going on? <laughs> the fact is, the policies coming out of Washington are preventing us from having the economic recovery and the job growth that we could be having, we should be having. And after this election, we will start having. Yeah. We're going to make some changes. Yeah. Now, in, in my race, I'm running against a guy named Joe Sestak. <laughs> Congressman Joe Sestak has voted for every single item on the Obama Pelosi agenda. And his only criticism is that they haven't gone far enough. That stimulus bill, 800 some odd billion dollars of money we don't have spent on things we don't need, Joe Sestak voted for it and said it should have been a trillion dollars. Government run health care. Not only did Joe Sestak vote for that bill, but he voted for a version of the bill that would have allowed states to ban all private health insurance altogether. He voted for that cap-and-trade energy tax, which would devastate our Pennsylvania economy, and said it should have gone further. Even on national security issues, Joe is way out on the fringe, arguing that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the admitted mastermind of 9-11, should be given a civilian trial here in Pennsylvania. You know, i got to tell you, um, this is a hard thing to find, but Joe Sestak found a way to get to the left of Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> he is more liberal than Nancy Pelosi, voting with her 100% of the time, but here's the good news. I'm pretty sure that Pennsylvania is not going to elect a San Francisco liberal to the United States Senate. So, when, when I think about this agenda that they have been inflicting on our economy and what they're threatening to do, and then I think about the election that's four days away. I'm reminded of a great line from the great Winston Churchill who said about all of us, he said, you can always count on the Americans to get it right. Yeah. After they've exhausted every other possible option. <laughs> this Obama Pelosi setback agenda is the process of exhausting the other options. Next Tuesday, the people across Pennsylvania, the American people are going to get it right. And it's going to start here in Bucks County. I've got to tell you, I feel like we're in a great position. We've got tremendous energy, enthusiasm, momentum. We've got a victory within reach, but it's not yet in hand. We can be confident, but we can't be complacent. I know you've all been a great help to our ticket. You're going to make sure that we elect as the next governor of the Commonwealth, Tom Corbett, who's going to be a great governor. And I know you're going to help my campaign and the other terrific candidates we've got on our ticket, but I've got to ask you to do everything you can. In these last few days, it's going to be the campaigns that do the best job turning out their voters that's going to win this race. This is a close race. And I need to ask every one of you to reach out to your circle of influence, your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, anybody you can. <clears throat> Bring them to the polls. Make sure they turn out and vote. I believe that the 21st century can be another great American century. We just need to remember the source of our prosperity. It's not ever bigger government. If we focus on limiting the size of the government, sweeping away the excess regulations, make the 2003 tax cuts permanent, for crying out loud, and get spending under control. We can have a great recovery. So again, I want to thank you for all your support. Let's hang in there for four more days. And now I want to introduce somebody that I'm very grateful. He's made the trip to come up here and be with us. <laughs> This is a guy who has a, uh, an incredibly distinguished career. He's been the chairman of the Republican National Committee. He's been the governor and been re-elected governor 
uh, of the great state of Mississippi, and because of his leadership in Mississippi, including passing really meaningful tort reform and creating an environment where businesses want to invest, the fact is he has helped to turn around his state. He is showing the way for governors all across the country. Please join me in welcoming the governor of Mississippi, Haley Bottle.